The Philadelphia Eagles have been busy today, struggling over a decision to either keep or let go a longtime Eagle, and then they decide to bring a coach back that they had eight years ago. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. For those of you who are new to the channel and love talking Philly sports every single day, hit that subscribe button. Now, if you love and respect Jason Peters, but realize the Eagles cannot pay a 38-year-old money to play when you got a young, talented, first-round left tackle on the bench who is on his rookie deal, smash that like button. And oh, by the way, it helps this content and pushes it out to other Philly fans. With all that being said, we got a lot to talk about. Jason Peters and the new coach brought into the staff to be an assistant coach, Marty Morningway. Let's get into it. But when I seen him pulling, that's what got me in the end zone. As you can see, I love Jason Peters. There's a lot of old Eagles that you love. It's hard to say goodbye to a fan favorite like Jason Peters, but at 38 years old, I mean, the only possible way he was going to be able to be brought back being a free agent is if he took a really skimpy deal, a team-friendly deal, and pretty much mentored and helped Andre Dillard, which he's been doing since Andre Dillard's been in the league. But you can't pay a guy at 38, so why make him suffer a cheap deal when you know this is probably going to be the last year, maybe two, of his career because he's had health issues. Now, in a game, any given Sunday, he could be the le best left tackle in the league. I know that. But at his age, you can't pay him a top dollar or even middle dollar deal at 38 with the injuries and stuff. So instead of cheating him out of money, let him go get paid by someone else, help another team out, and we got to go with our first round pick who we moved up to get Andre Dillard to see if he can be that guy for the future because his rookie deal will be coming up soon and we got to know if he's legit. If we would not have did that and end up getting rid of Andre Dillard like the trade rumors were suspected, trading Andre Dillard and Alshon Jeffrey to move Alshon and then Jason Peters gets hurt or he retires next year, that just sets us way back at left tackle. And we know this league starts in the trenches. You got to have a dominant D-line that helps everything in the back of your defense. And you got to have a monster offensive line that helps the skill players give more time to get open. It helps the quarterback. It helps the runner, running backs. It does so much up in the trenches on both sides of the ball, defense and offense. So you got to get the young boy in and play so we know if we can sign him to the long-term future. He has a nice 7 to 10 years as the left tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles if everything goes according to plans. So Jason Peters, why take a team-friendly deal? Go get your money, play one more year of football, best of luck, ball out, retire, chill, do what you got to do. Now, before we get into Marty Morningway, let's remember how we got here. Right after the season started, the Philadelphia Eagles released Carson Welsh and Mike Rowe and said that we will find our new offensive coordinator in the next couple weeks. So, there was a lot of candidates thrown out there in the rumorville. The Philadelphia Eagles rumorville. It can get crazy at times. But we had guys like Mike Kafka, James Urban, Graham Harold, Jim Caldwell, Kevin O'Connell, and many more. We even had Press Taylor and Deuce Daly say that they were going to be talked about as candidates for OC. When all that was done, the Philadelphia Eagles came out and said, we are not going to get an offensive coordinator. We are going to let Doug Peterson do what he got to do, call the plays. Now, at first I was like, what? But I kind of liked the idea because Doug Peterson did call the plays ever since he was the head coach. The year we won the Super Bowl, Frank Wright does deserve some credit. I believe what Frank Wright did was help Doug Peterson prep for the week, motivate some guys, and Doug Peterson respected him to listen to some of his, you know, plays and ideas. And I think Doug Peterson implemented them in his game plan and on the sideline in certain situations. And that's why I was all for Jim Caldwell, get a veteran guy who's older, don't wanna call plays, who can use his mind and his eyes and his ears to help Doug Peterson. 
offer this advice here, talk about this here, game plan throughout the week. That's what Doug Peterson needs. Remember, Philly Philly was Doug Peterson and Nick Foles. Nothing to do with Frank Wright. You know, a lot of the going for it on fourth down that we did that year, that was Doug Peterson. Some of the plays, that was Doug Peterson. But like I said, Frank Wright was in his ear and he respected his opinion. I don't believe he respected anything Mike Rowe said and he was just riding solo and it was too much for him. So when they said this, I was like, okay, let's see the staff. So what did the Eagles do? They kept Deuce Daly as the assistant coach and runners back coach. They promote Press Taylor from quarterback coach to passing game coordinator. Then they hire a wide receiver coach named Aaron Moorhead. And then I'm like, okay, where are they going to get these guys to help Doug Peterson? They hire the old offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos, Rich Scaganello, but they call him a senior offensive assistant. They bring in a guy from college, a passing game analyst named Andrew Briner, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe one of these guys could take that Frank Wright role and just, you know, critique Doug Peterson in certain situations, help prep the guys unlike Mike Groh did, and do all the things that we need to do. Plus, the Eagles just got to stay healthy. <laughs> the players got to be healthy regardless. Anyways, so now weeks go by. We're talking about the NFL free agency coming up in a couple days. We're talking about next month draft. And boom, the Eagles go out and hire another old offensive coordinator who's been here with the Eagles before. He was the OC for the Jets, the OC for the Ravens. We hire Marty Morningway. And what we're calling him is a senior assistant. And that's what he was for the Philadelphia Eagles when he first started here. Let's talk about it. Marty Mordenway was a senior assistant in 2003. Then he became an assistant head coach in 2004 through 2005. Then he became the offensive coordinator and assistant head coach from 2006 to 2012. Now he's back with the Eagles in 2020 as a senior assistant again, whatever that means. Let's just talk about what the record looked like each year while Morty Morningway was just on his staff in any shape, way, or form, let's just remember. In 2003, we were 12 and 4. In 2004, 13 and 3. 2005, 6 and 10. 2006, 10 and 6. 2007, 8 and 8. 2008, 9 and 6 and 1. Remember, that was the year McNabb forgot there is a such thing as a tie. 2009, 11 and 5. 2010, 10 and 6, 2011, 8 and 8, and 2012, 4 and 12, and he was gone. At the end of the day, I don't know who it's going to be. Maybe Rich Scaganello, maybe Marty Mortonway, but one of these two guys who are now the senior assistant and the senior offensive assistant, one of these guys are going to play right-hand man to Doug Peterson. Not be called the OC, but one of these guys is going to be like the offensive coordinator. I don't know who it's going to be, Rich or Marty. But with these two guys, they have to try to fill the shoes of Frank Wright. Like I said, Tug Peterson's been calling plays and he's going to continue. But I need someone to, you know, make Doug see that he should run it on third and one because he loves the pass. Things of that sort. And I want these guys to come out ready to play in their first quarter. The play calling can be whatever. If these guys are not performing, the plays don't work. So while Doug Peterson is coming up with the playbook, looking at the tape, I need a guy like Marty Mortonway and or a Rich Scanganello to prep these guys and put the, implement the thing with the guys throughout the week. Do their job. I don't think Mike Crow or Carlson Welsh or a lot of these people other than Doug Peterson were doing their job. So... Is Marty Mordaway going to come here and save the Eagles? No, but it's not his job to. Again, Rich Scaganello and Marty Mordaway are not going to be able to get the blame if the Eagles come out next year and play bad. <laughs> They're not going to. If the Eagles do good, it's going to be about Doug Peterson. If the Eagles do bad, it's going to be about Doug Peterson. There's no offensive coordinator. He is the guy who does anything and everything with this offense. He's going to probably hear guys out like Rich Ganganello and Marty Mornaway because they have experience in the league. They've been around. Marty Mornaway has been around a long time. So he might open his ears to him. And we've both seen the best and the worst of Marty Mornaway. We've seen some bad losing seasons, like I said, and we've seen some bright spots. Some big plays down the field. Remember, 
Mike Vick had his best passing year. We remember the Atlanta Falcons rushing years, but he ran with the Eagles too. But his best statistical, I can never say that word, statistical passing year was with the Philadelphia Eagles under Marnie Morningway. Simple and plain. So there is some good things to him. There is some bad things to him, but he's not going to be the play caller. So however you feel about him calling plays, maybe he's not too creative. Maybe he's this, maybe he's that. He's not going to do that. But I do think he can offer something to Doug Peterson. Another pair of eyes. We wanted fresh eyes. <laughs> These are eight-year-old eyes, but still new on the scene to critique what Doug does that we don't like. So hopefully it works out. I'm not super happy. I'm not super mad. I'm just like, I got to see how all these assistants work out together. The assistant to the assistant to the assistant to the assistant to Doug Peterson. When in doubt, it's going to come down to, can Doug Peterson get us in the playoffs again? And this time, let's go on a run. But again, there's a lot of things that play into it. Health is one of the main concerns. And this 2020 free agency and draft is crucial. Health, free agency, draft, let's go. With all that being said, I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. I know a lot of people that watch this are not subscribed, so hit that button and smash that like button. It helps this content grow. And don't forget to leave me a comment because I love hearing from you guys. How do you really feel about Jason Peters? Again, I love him, but I think it's time. Let me know in the comment section. And also, how do you feel about Marty Morningway being a senior assistant? Like I said, it's the assistant to the assistant to the assistant. Let me know in the comment section. Until next time, you know what time it is. We out.